before we have a go at this, before we have a go at this, I want to show you uh, how to do this wrong. <laughs> uh, I need to show you a really common error with this because it's so common. And then I want to show you how, um, how what we've already developed on how to approach domain array will save you from this error. Okay, so. I want you to listen through, and I hope as I speak this out, you spot the flaws in my logic. But if they're not immediate to you, think very hard about what's going wrong. Okay, so here's what I'm going to think about this. Um, I'm going to say, look, I know what cos inverse normally looks like. I have a picture in my head, and I'll just for the sake of it, you've already got this picture there, but I just rubbed it off. This, I think, should suffice. Okay, there's cos inverse. So I think about, all right, what's going to happen to this? to make it this, okay? Here's my thought process. Mm -hmm. I see a two, I see a two. So I know what that means. That's going to change the horizontal so it's tighter. Does that make sense? Make it tighter, okay? So I know what that looks like. Instead of being negative one to one, negative one to one, that's gonna be negative a half to a half. We just doubled it, okay? That normally is what happens. Everything gets sort of compressed. So far, so good. I know what that means. That means I have to shift horizontally, right? Negative means I go in the positive direction, okay? So this is not gonna go from negative a half to a half anymore. It's gonna go from, well, if I add one to everything, because it's going to the right, one unit, right? That's gonna become a half and that's gonna become one and a half. Yeah, is that okay? That, that's, that's one unit, everything's going forward a half and one and a half. So this is the picture I have in my head now. And then I work out this part. I usually go from naught to pi. Naught to pi. So I should only go half that far. So I think this is going to be pi on two. Looks reasonable, right? Except for the fact that it's wrong. Now the question is, why is it wrong? Where was the flaw in my logic? Because I did, like I did, it is the right you know, thinness, and if you put a negative one, that usually does shift you one unit to the right. So what's going wrong? What's going wrong, yeah? Because what happens is that, you know you said that you shift it one unit to the right? It's not actually one unit, it's a half. Okay, um, let me take that thought. It's not actually one unit, it's a half. Because it's a two, because like if you put it inside the, like, inside the minus one, two x minus one, mm -hmm. Um, so how would you suggest I rewrite this? So it's in between, oh you rewrite it, take half outside, and then divide it as half, half, two. Two. half two. Oh, sorry, it's sort of You'll factor, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to factorize out, there's a two there, which is a weird thing to factorize out, because it's not a common factor, is it, right? When I look at this, I'm like, that's as simple as it gets, I don't touch this, but in fact I should. Here's why. This is really what's happening. This is really what's happening, okay? This is a bit confusing because it's kind of like, why, why should I do it that way? It is not obvious at all. Like I said, if someone showed you this and this and said which one is simpler, I'm pretty sure we'd all say this, right? It looks better, okay? However, remember how I said before, to make clear what is going on, you should always move, rearrange numbers, coefficients, um, shifting constants, that kind of thing. Move them over to whatever they're acting on to make it clear what's going on. That's why we move things over to the Y, this is not really a one acting on this x, or a negative one, I should say. The negative one is actually acting on two x, but it shouldn't do that, right? That's why factoring out makes this clear. Now let me help you see that, okay? Let's do, um, let's do this domain and range thing. Let's do it, let's approach it algebraically. And even, I'm even gonna skip this step, okay? I'm gonna go back to what it looked like before. And all I'm gonna do is move that half over. When it's on the left-hand side, it's gonna be a two. Right, so it looks like this. Okay, now let's think about domain and then we'll think about range. What's the regular domain of cos inverse? Negative one to one. Okay, so negative one to one. There it is. Okay, now I'm just gonna do my normal, normal algebra style. I'm not gonna think about the visuals. I'm gonna work with this until I get some insight out of it. What shall I do to all of these components to start simplifying? I think adding one is the most logical thing to do first, right? Did you notice that? Adding one is the logical thing to do first. Like when you think about why should I muck around with this? So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add one to everything which gives me this. And you immediately notice what's going here, right? When you divide through, which is the next, this is the only thing you can do left, 
You're getting this, which tells you this is wrong. Right? Even before you think about, oh, which way am I supposed to go? Just the algebra on the domain tells you something has gone wrong here in my logic. Okay? Namely, what I did was, I, I shrunk things down first, and then I moved them. In fact, I should have moved, and then shrunk them. Second, right? Which is exactly what happened here. I moved, and then I shrunk. Right? Shrank, whichever. But if you do it the other way, it still works. Okay, say that again. But if you do it the other way, it still works. If you do it the other way, it works, so long as you remember what we were saying before about the factorization. Uh, that this is, in fact, this. Okay? I'm going to point out some more important examples of that later on. But this is still perfectly sufficient, and it's much less error prone. People get this wrong all the time, even when they know they have to do it. Let's fix up the range, which is not where the tricks are, really. What am I going to do to the range? It's normally. What's it normally? Oh, naught to pi, so naught to pi, but I don't have y, I've got 2y. So that's why I divide through, and that part was fine. Okay. So what should my graph actually look like? Not like either of those, right? It's going to look like this. I'm entirely in the first quadrant, which I read off the domain and range. And I'm going to go from, where am I going to go from? Here. Okay, I can fix up all my numbers too. That's going to be 1, a half, pi on 2. And here is my equation. Okay, does that make sense? So, watch out for these kinds of things. This is not the only way it happens, by the way. For instance, an identical kind of thing could happen if I said, don't, don't draw this, but just think it through with me. If I said a half cos inverse of, hmm, how about this? Okay, now we're not going to draw it, just think it through with me, okay? Hmm. We know what's going to happen to the range, the range is the easy part. If I do the algebra, I'll take this approach that Makita was suggesting before, right? Because actually it is a little more helpful here. If I go ahead and do this, I could rewrite it like this. Oops. Now on the face of it, that looks like a shift in which direction? On the face of it. It looks like a shift to the left, doesn't it? Like if I asked you to draw this, and then asked you to draw this, I know you'd all draw one parabola on the origin and then the other one with its root at negative one. We're really good at this, but this is not a shift to the left. It's not a shift to the left at all. Right? It's a shift to the right because what's really happening? There's a negative that should be taken out, right? That negative there means what you're left with after you factorize is this. And now it's clear, oh, it's actually a shift to the right. And then there's a horizontal flip, right? There's that shift and then there's that flip. Okay? So this kind of thing is very helpful because I will point out the domain of this and the domain of had I flipped it around will be the same. right? So the inequalities won't tell you which direction it's facing. Um, were I to put a horizontal flip on this, it's going to look like sine inverse, isn't it? It's going to become an increasing function. It will do something like this. But the domain and range themselves don't tell you that. They just tell you where you can go, not how you get from one side to the other. Does that make sense? So learning this way of factorizing is useful, but it can get a bit confusing if you don't have this firmly in your mind first. Okay, so that's my advice.